Moving into week two, we'll be talking about how you can enter and clean your data in R. So we'll start by talking a little bit about the types of files we can have and how you can read that data into your current R session. Here's an overview of the basic approach. The first thing that you'll often need to do if you don't already have the data on your computer is to download it. After that, you want to save it in a place that's going to be pretty easy to find. At the beginning of the class, you might just use your desktop or even try from downloads when we do this more ephemeral projects where we don't need to save the data, we're just testing things out. But later, you will start using R projects to group together all of the files associated with the project in um, a set place, a set directory, where they're all easy to find and easy to work with, and it's easier for you to take that whole directory and share it with someone else. In that case, it's very helpful to have a subdirectory there named something like data, where you keep all of that, that data. Once you have it there, you'll read it into R. We're going to focus a lot on using the read R functions. There are some functions in base R as well, um, but I think that a lot of the default values are just a little bit nicer in read R. So that's a package in the tidyverse. If you don't have it already, again, you'll need to use install.packages to install it to your computer. And then we'll use library reader to load it in our current R session whenever we're ready to use these, these packages excuse me, these functions. Once you get the data in, you need to take a look and make sure it came in okay. We'll look at some functions for doing that. Those include checking the dimensions to make sure it has as many rows and columns as you think it should, and also taking a look at certain pieces of the data to make sure it looks like it came in okay. So what kind of data can you get into R? Really, the sky's the limit. We're going to work a lot with something called flat files. I'll talk a little bit in a minute about what those are and how we can look at those. Um, but you can also read in data from other statistical packages, so data that are saved in an Excel file format or a SAS file format. You can read in data that are tables on web pages, and for some of these, I put in some links in the slides for how you can go through and, and look at those, or the example data for, for reading that in. You can also read in data that's in a database, for example, a SQL database. Data that's stored in XML or JSON, which is, both of those are, are pretty common formats for storing data, especially on online databases. You can also read in complex data formats. Often somebody's created a package just to read in a specialty type of file format. So one example, a lot of climate and weather data is saved using NetCDF files. Those are very efficient for that type of gridded data that's very large. And those save things in large arrays. Um, there are special R packages just for reading that in, just like there are for reading in data that's stored in a special file format for MRA data. You can also get data through APIs. A lot of um, organizations now will share their data using this programming interface. And so we'll look in the last part of the class about how to do this because there are a lot of wonderful packages in R now for accessing that data directly from R. So you don't even have to visit the website in your browser to pull the data. Instead, you can read it in directly. You can even read in data that is very, very messy through some functions like scan and read lines. As long as there is some logic in how that data is stored in the file, these functions will let you read it in a line at a time and, and do some, some, um, some operators to get it into the shape you need to, to move on. So let's talk a little bit about flat files. This will be the first type of file that we work with a lot in this class. So, R, as I mentioned, can read in data from a lot of formats. The only catch is you have to tell it exactly how to do it. So flat files are plain text files. That means that you can open them in a text editor and they, they look like something that a human could read rather than a random string of letters and numbers. Um, so they typically will have a two-dimensional structure where you've got some kind of clear separation between the columns and the rows when we are looking at data that's stored in these flat files. There are two main types of flat files. One of them is called a fixed width format. For these, when you open it up, it'll already look kind of like a table where it's got separate columns. So for these, you will tell the computer how wide each column is. 
Um, in other words, how many times you would do the, the, the right arrow to get to the next column level, and then the computer is able to read that in pretty easily. The other type are called delimited files. So in these, there's a certain symbol called a delimiter, excuse me, a delimiter that tells the computer where the break is between each of the separate columns as it's going across. There are a few common delimiters that are used for this. Um, one is a comma, and we tend to call those files that use a comma as a delimiter, comma separated values. Often those will end with a file extension of CSV. Uh, another common one is to use a tab. These are called tab separated values, and a lot of times that ends in .tab or .tsv. But there are a number of other delimiters you could use, instead, including a, a colon, a semicolon, and a pipe, which is just kind of like that straight up and down bar. So I would like you to pause your video right now and take a look. Hopefully you've downloaded the PDF of the slides for this video. Take a look through the next few slides and see if you can figure out what the type of files are for each of the following files. Once you've done that, come back and I will walk through what each of those are and how by looking at the file we can figure out it was that type. All right, hopefully you have gotten the chance to look through each of those, so let's take a look now. This first one, if you look at the file, you can see that we've got commas in here on each row, and those seem to be separating out different types of information. If you look at the top, clearly we've got some column names here, species, and then long and lat, that's probably longitude and latitude, again, separated by commas. So in this case, we're using a delimited file, and it's a comma delimited file, so a CSV. So we can use any function that works well for reading in a comma separated value file. This next one, you can see very clearly that, that just opening it up, there's a visual distinction between where the columns fall in the file. So we've clearly got one column here and then some space in another column here where we've got makes of cars and then um, plenty of space and then another column here and so on. This is a, a classic look at a, a um, fixed width file where if you count across the columns in the file, you can figure out where you need to make the splits to read in the separate columns. This next one, we're back to a delimited file again. In this case, the delimiter is the pipe symbol. That could be a useful one in some cases because it's very rare to find it in common text. Um, there was one case, uh, one data analysis project I worked on where we ended up using these because we had the names of Supreme Court cases and the, the petitioners, and it turned out a lot of the names had commas in them or they had ampersands in them or all kinds of other symbols that made it really hard for us to tell the computer something that it might not otherwise see in the file. So a pipe is rare to see otherwise in a lot of text, so often it's helpful. This next one's a little bit tricky. We see that there are spaces between some of the different columns, but if you look down, you see sometimes things have kind of gotten misaligned. So down here, you can see that this is the break between two values, two different columns for the observation in this row, the title and then the author. But that break comes a lot later in the line for the row above it. This is often what it looks like when you have a tab as the delimiter. So each of these empty spaces has a tab embedded and the computer can recognize that as a special character and it can separate there. So even though we have the space, because they're kind of misaligned, this is probably a tab separated value. All right, here's another one. In this case, again, we have commas to separate things. There are a few features that I wanna point out here though. So because we are using commas to separate the different columns for an observation, so the different values or fields that we have for each observation, um, this is a comma separated value file and we'll be able to read it in with any of the functions you could use on those, those comma delimited files. But there are a few things that are interesting here. First of all, we see a few places where there's some commas in a row. Uh, that looks a little funny in the file, but really these are places where they are missing information for some of the fields or values for that particular observation. When we read it into R, it will set that NA, not available character, in for each of those spaces. 
The other thing to note, sometimes we've got a bunch of quotation marks in a row, and we've got quotation marks going through. So what's happening here in, in most of these cases is that they even either want to use quotation marks inside the name of the song, or they've got a comma somewhere in it. So the trick with these comma delimiters is that R can't tell the difference between there being a comma, uh, comma in the field that you want to share versus a comma that's separating two fields. So let's take a look right here. The song is New York, New York, which has a comma in it. So they put quotation marks around that. That protects the comma in the inside. When R gets to the quotation mark, it will wait until it sees the closing one and use that whole value as the field before it looks for a comma to separate for the next field. All right, here's our last example. This one is, again, one of those where we see this clear delineation. There is a possibility it's tab delimited. If we get an error reading this into R with a fixed width call, then we can tell that maybe we should try a, uh, um, treating as a, as a tab delimited file. But I think it probably is fixed width. The other thing that I wanted to note here that could cause a problem is we've got a completely empty line here. A lot of times when R is reading in a flat file, it starts from the top and it goes down until it gets to the end of the file when, when there's nothing else printed there. Occasionally you will have issues if there is a blank line like this before you move on. So we'll look a little bit later about how once you get your file in, you can check it. I mentioned you might want to check to make sure that the dimensions and the number of rows are what you're expecting. And you can also take a peek at just the end of the data and make sure that looks like what you're expecting as well. So here that's something we might want to do. And if we see that Timothy Myers is there at the bottom, then we would realize that there was a problem reading this in. And it stopped a little bit too soon because of this blank line. So as you're trying to figure out the type of flat file, it's really important to figure it out because that's how you'll tell R how to read it in. There are different function calls depending on whether it's a flat file or a different type of file. And then if it is a flat file, what type is it? Is it fixed width or is it delimited? And if it's delimited, what is the delimiter? Um, so in addition to, to opening these up and taking a look at them like we just did, you can also sometimes get a clue based on the file extension used at the end of the file name. Flat files will often use an extension like txt. Um, ones in specific formats will often use their own ending like CSV for comma separated, FWF for a fixed width format, and then TSV for uh, tab separated. So my advice is when you have a flat file and you want to look and figure out the structure of it, look at the file name, look at the end of it, and then also open it up and take a look at it in a text editor, editor just like we were doing with the example files. To do that, you can either use a text editor on your computer or you can use RStudio. RStudio has no problem with opening up plain text files. To do that, you can right click on the file name and then choose open with. So let's take a look very quickly at doing that. Here is a CSV file, a comma separated file, but if we want to take a look and confirm that's really what it is, we can right click and do open with, and then come down and you might need to select other. Sometimes this isn't de de the default to use RStudio. You might even need to choose all applications rather than just the recommended ones. But then you can go down and choose our studio. And if you want to, you can set so that it would always open with this. Once you open it, you can see that it's opened it up there in the same place where it normally puts our scripts. And we can scroll through and take a look and see that this is indeed a comma separated value. 